You're listening to the Wild Poor Dog Podcast with Karen Wilde and John Bus. The bandwidth for the Wild Poor Dog Podcast this week was sponsored by Dougal's Den. Dougalsden.co.uk. Amazing finds for the furry kind. Hello and welcome back to another Wild Poor Dog Podcast. This week, it's just me doing the introductions as Karen has already recorded an interview with Beverly Cuddy, editor of Dogs Today magazine. In the interview, Karen and Beverly talk about the dangers of leaving your dog in a car. And this is something that we as dog owners should be acutely aware of. Even whilst I was on vacation in France this summer, um, I saw a dog left in a car and immediately went into the hypermarket, notified the staff of what was going on and made sure that they took action. But enough of me. Here's Karen talking to Beverly Cuddy, editor of Dogs Today magazine. Well, Beverly, thanks for coming on the podcast again. Now, I wanted to ask you about this really hot topic, if you'll excuse the horrible pun, um, which is the campaign that I know you've been running with Dogs Today magazine um, called Don't Cook Your Dog. So so tell me about the campaign. What's happening? Right. Well, I think just like anyone, when we heard the news about the poor, poor two dogs that had been killed in a police car, um, we, we felt really ang- angry and despondent. We just couldn't believe that this is happening yet again. We, we keep hearing of dogs dying in cars, but we, nobody seems to collectively learn from it. And went onto Twitter, went onto Facebook, and everybody was ranting and raving, and everybody was upset by it. And there was so much emotion, so much energy. But at that moment, there didn't seem to be anywhere positive to put it. And over the course of an hour or so, we all sort of threw some ideas around and we'd remembered this dim and distant past when the, the RSPCA did a brilliant test where they took a Volvo, dropped its windows, put the patch back up and, and just recorded the temperatures as they rose. And yeah, pretty soon that car was, was a death trap. And even with every precaution, you couldn't turn that car into somewhere safe to leave a dog on a hot day. And it, it, we all just said, right, well, let's, let's promote zero tolerance of leaving dogs in cars. And um, somebody, else, somebody else on Twitter, a lo- lovely M- Missy Red Boots, whose real name is Judith Brogue, is a designer, and she straight away said, "Right, I'm going to do a visual. Going to do a visual to that. They, they don't cook your dog." And you know, if she hadn't actually acted that moment and got on with it, um, it may be that it may be just an idea that was lost into Twitterdom. But no, she came back with a, a first version and a second version and a third version, about a 200 millionth version because. Every, every few minutes got to tweak something and the campaign was born and um, it, it, it all moved really really fast so but it was we, a collective desire to do something positive so that you know the key here um, as you said is yes you know we, we obviously we know that the temperatures rise in the car and you know people would say that you know opening the windows a bit is, is okay um, but we are talking about I mean, the campaign is called Don't Cook Your Dog, and it's quite a graphic yeah. image, isn't it? So, it so is. they, actually, they actually do cook in the car, is that right? That's right. I mean, the, those two t- dogs that died, they weren't dead when they, they got out of that car. Um, they, they'd got um, brain bleeds, their kidneys had stopped fun- functioning, but they were still alive. Um, the sensitive bits of the dog don't respond well to high temperature. Um, the, the RSPCA confirmed the dog does start to cook oh, that's and you just think being, being cooked alive oh, is that's... just the most awful way to die and that's the graphic image we need to get over to people is that it won't you know you won't avoid this just by dropping your windows or going really quickly as soon as you put a dog in a, in 40 degrees it's starting to cook just as if you would put your dinner in the oven and that's we need to make that connection for people that it's not those other people we're talking about it's you it's it, it's the person that just takes that risk because people become sort of set in their behavior the first time they risk it they nip into the shop for a few minutes and they come out and the dog's still okay they think oh well it's okay and then they do it again only the next time they're in the shop their phone goes and they end up talking to somebody and they they, they get distracted or they can't find what they're looking for and they go to another shop and it's those sort of behaviours that we want to stop we want people never to take the risk well Just I think don't leave the dog there in the first I place that's, on hot day. that's absolutely right I mean I think that you know it's very easy to sort of think that's other people and actually I mean I think um, you put on the blog about an incident that happened at the weekend about a Yorkshire Terrier tell me about yeah. that what happened there 
Yeah, this is so sad. I mean, the, 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 the person went, obviously went into shop at Iceland and left the dog in the car, dropped the windows, left water. Um, somebody in a, a nearby shop noticed, put their hand in the, in the car window, which was down enough for them to do that. So leaving the dog in a car that could have been stolen for, for a start is a really stupid idea. But, you know, the, the, they were able to get in and get, the, get in there, but the dog was already gone. It was an hour and twenty minutes, and dog was dead. So it was already um, dead. It was only a, it was a Yorkshire it was a Yorkshire Terrier. So it was quite yeah, a small little dog. Yorkie. Yeah, and, and dogs like um, pugs, other dogs that have already got breathing problems. Um, you know, the slight elevation and temperature can be really very quickly catastrophic. So, so we, we've got to be so careful. So we're not obviously we're not setting ourselves up here and saying you know wag the finger and telling other people off. Like you say, it's something that could happen to to anyone. And I'm sure the person at the supermarket at the weekend, you know, that wasn't their intention. They obviously no. love their dog, and we are, you know, we're all for. I don't know about yourself. I know dogs today are very much for the kind of socialisation so, so, socialisation aspect. Put my teeth back in of yeah. dogs, and you know how to keep them in public and try and keep your dogs out and about with you. And yeah. do you think that you know now we have so much more of a car culture that this is something that is really becoming more and more crucial that you know yeah. people are going out in their cars they want the dog with them and we would encourage that but there are places you cannot take the dog so what what would you do would you leave the dog at home would you walk everywhere how can we get around this because yeah. we're not it's not other people like i say it's everyone it's all of our dog owning yeah. community that's the thing i mean the, the the agility world can actually teach us a lot um, on safety and cars because the culture in the agility world is is to use the car at an event as a place to, to keep your other dog mm. and they've all invested in in technology they've got things that make cars much safer mm. and that, that we, we've got a piece going in the next issue about all the things you can do if, it, if say you've got a service dog or you you, you do spend every day with your dog and there are times when you're going to be either in stationary traffic or you going to, there's going to be a time when your dog is going to be in the car mm. how can you make it a safer place and there's, there's innovations there's, um, we, a lovely lady um, told us the other day about a company that will retrofit your car with air conditioning well at the moment you're only doing certain models because it's quite a complex thing but that there is this that some police forces have adopted and certainly some service dogs people have adopted that after you've um, turned off the ignition on your car, there's a button you can press that reactivates your air con and makes your car tick over for several hours. As much fuel as you've got, you, you can have your air con on in your car when you're not. Now, the people that, like the police who are attending an incident and they stop somewhere and, and, and you know, the, 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 the dog has to be in the car, that is a lifesaver and every police force in Britain should have that fitted in their vehicles and mm. if you're a person that can afford it then this is something that yeah would be a fantastic way of making sure this never happens to you yeah that's interesting because I can remember I mean I did agility years and years ago and I used to go to shows and there are times where you just you know you want to give the dog a rest or there's something mm. and there are like you say there's it's actually a really good opportunity for any businesses that are out there you know that, that could quite happily promote something that they produce that will promote this whole yeah. idea I mean I had um, a whole sort of cage system fitted in my car that completely locked up the car even though virtually everything yeah. in the car was wide open including covered sheets and everything yeah and yeah reflective reflective sheets um there, there are so many there are battery operated fans there's lots of things you can put in place i mean what you also need is you need a um temperature gauge so that you know what what what's going on in that space but but very often um people can create a space that is much cooler than the outside temperature so rather than the the normal thing that happens with a car where it's a good 10, 10, 10, you know, 10 degrees higher within within the car. I'm just going to have to... Even with windows down. I'm just going to have to stop a second, Beverly. Hang on. <laughs> okay. So there are lots of products available that people could really just get stuck into. I mean, if you make a decision, do you take the dog with you and you do have to leave the dog? First of all, you have to make sure the car is secure. So that's something that people could be looking at. And then we're talking about the temperatures as well, aren't we? So, you know, like you said earlier, the risk of having your dog stolen out of the car is pretty high, isn't it? It is. I, I think that's something that people really have got to keep an eye on. Also, the, the, the fact is that even if you're not intending to leave the dog in the car, if you're on a journey, um, 
particularly in the summer holidays, the chances are you might get stuck in stationary traffic on the N25 or or a, an, if there's an accident somewhere where people have been stuck there for hours. And if you've got no way of cooling your car down, your dog is going to be at risk just while you're in traffic and you're in the car too. Mm. And And you really need to have a little kit that you you take with you on really hot days but you know the those little things that you spray to you know spray on your plants and things with those that those are fantastic are just a, a water spray that you can spray your dog down if if they've just got just slightly hot in the car mm. that um, was so i was going to say i remember not that long ago it was a few years ago there was an incident wasn't there of somebody that was traveling with show dogs in the car and they had yeah. a kind of trailer um and they were quite large breed dogs if i recall and i think that it was felt that the do- the temperature in the trailer had already reached the levels that we're talking about here as they were going along the motorway and um it was when they stopped at a service station which is again completely normal behavior i mean you know you're driving along in your car you're perhaps going to a show you stop at a service station because you you know you want a comfort break and mm-hmm. you know in the meantime the dogs are still in there can't get out you know so it, it just happens to, to just ordinary people doesn't it and i think one of the biggest mm-hmm. mistakes we could make is to vilify people and sort of say well you know they're, they're really stupid and they don't know what they're doing i think in some instances someone who works with dogs should probably know better but in there are other instances where you know we just we just don't think about it do we yeah i mean it, that's the thing we we need a clear message that says just don't risk it just do not think it's going to be all right just for a few minutes because y- you will have to live with this for the rest of your life mm. and and the people do feel absolutely mortified when they they put their dog through oh, this so as you would, it's, yeah. it's, it's trying to make sure that people avoid this ever happening and just have all the information they need um i, I think also we, we what we were hoping to do is work with supermarkets and have better um better ways for people to deal with this situation so if if, if a shop has a has a big car park then the person who's bringing the trolleys back should also at the same time be keeping an eye out for dogs in distress and they'll have a clear policy of what they do because just that sort of we don't know what to do bit when there might be half an hour or even an hour where they're waiting for for, for someone to attend mm. that can be the time that the dog dies so what do people do then you know say i mean I, I i don't really know about supermarket laws and private property and that sort of thing but if you see a dog in a car and you know that it shouldn't be there even if it's not distressed you think oh my goodness this is really bad what what do you do what can anybody mm. out here do because there's there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people listening to this podcast and they're thinking yes i understand okay we won't do that ourselves but what if we do see somebody who's done that well, there are several things you can do. Um, the first thing to do is to go into the, the most obvious shop, the supermarket that's nearest, and, and talk to the supervisor or the manager, get it tannoyed over that there's, you know, car registration, whatever, dog in distress. Um, and, you know, don't just leave it there. Go back to the car if no one attends. Um, it, it almost comes down to a judgment call on your own. If, if you don't feel that the supermarket has really on top of this and you, you think and I'm, you know you, you've waited long enough you yourself can call it in you can phone 999 you can tell the operator that there's a dog in distress then they will make a judgment whether they which which service they call they will be able to look up for you either police or rspca again if you feel it's too long that people are still not responding and the time the time is ticking and this dog is really in dangerous distress the thing to do is cover your back. Use a phone to to, to photograph and or or, or or video preferably the situation. And then, if you feel moved to break in and release that dog, well, there is a small chance you'll get done for criminal damage. But if a person loves their dog they will be forever grateful to you because you'd have saved its life. And if presumably everyone, nearly everyone nowadays has a mobile phone on them or somebody, a passerby or bystander might have that if you don't have one yourself, would yeah. mean that you have evidence to show that, you know, look, this dog was actually just not, you know, here it is panting and look at the sunshine and, you know, this is the registration of the car. It was this particular car, you know, so you're actually yeah. recording the fact. So if it was criminal damage, why would you record it if it was going to exactly. be criminal damage? So is there exactly. actually a law i mean i don't know about the law in in detail but is there actually a law to say you mustn't leave the dog in the car or is it a law well, of the, cruelty the, instead well, after after the fact 
So the Animal Welfare Act apparently is 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 you know pretty all encompassing. So you by doing this you you are in breach of the Animal Welfare Act and you can be prosecuted. So the RSPCA we're we're going to work with them on what we try and encourage supermarkets to 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 be in possession of these facts because at the moment there's a huge grey area where people just don't feel confident enough. They they know there's a problem, but they do, it, it's only mavericks that will go in there and actually go and rescue that dog and worry about the consequences later. We'd like it really nutted out as to exactly where you stand. Someone suggested a private member's bill that would make it an offence to ignore seeing a dog in distress in a car, mm. that you then become culpable, that you're part of the cruelty if you don't intervene and get it out. So but that's an interesting dimension. It certainly make it a lot easier for people to say, um, you know, I, I'm being a good Samaritan. And, and, and the, the example that other people have used is, you know, well, if you look into your neighbour's house and you see that the cooker is there's a chip pan fire, if you break in to put it out, um, would you get sued for criminal damage for breaking through the door? Or would you be a hero for saving their house? Mm. And and it's, it's, it's the culture of... Um, are people going to sue everybody or are they going to say you're a hero you just you yeah, just denied. save the life of your dog and and yeah absolutely and i think you know the evidence has to be collected to show like you say how quickly these things can happen so now i know that um obviously you're onto the supermarkets and there are a lot of people listening that could probably support the campaign now you did have one as i recall very very influential supporter didn't you tell me about tell me about what happened there Oh yes, I mean we've had quite a few, really, and we've. we've it, I think this is something that people do feel so strongly about. What, one of one of um, one of our lovely readers woke up one morning and thought, "How can I support this campaign?" She was feeling really useless. She said, "You know, can I come round and stuff envelopes, or or what can I do?" And then she thought, "Well, actually, I'm, I do know some fairly influential people," and and she bless her, got on the phone and phoned around and and went could we get Stephen Fry to retweet this? And we had to come up with um, sort of 600 words of what this campaign's all about, what what we're trying to achieve. Um, could our website cope with um, the amount of traffic that would be generated? And we, we passed all, all, all these hurdles and Stephen thoroughly approved of what we were doing. And it's it's so rare to get Stephen Fry retweet. And he's got 2.98 million supporters. So it was a massive boost. So and just, it was, to, it was a, just to explain to people what a retweet is, if you don't, if you're not in the world of Twitter, um, um, Twitter obviously where lots and lots of people sign in and follow celebrities and other people and make up networks, and it's all very very fast environment, isn't it? It's almost like constant texting. And Stephen it. Fry is kind of quite an avid supporter of that. So how many supporters did you say he has? Uh, Two point nine eight million. Two point nine eight million would see if he put a statement out of any sort, and a retweet is where they copy and paste virtually what someone else has, has said. So he obviously put that out to all of his followers about the "Don't Cook Your Dog" campaign. Is that right? That's it. Yeah, and I think it was he only did about four tweets that whole day. So it's not like he's on there every five seconds. So everybody, as they check his because if you're a follower of his because he, he does have some very solid words of wisdom and some very witty things um people are still only just now catching up they may only look at him once a week so not only did we get a massive spike when he did it um there's been a ripple effect ever since and and every day it's people all over the world that are clicking on and 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 contacting us i mean that's the other thing is that this has almost immediately become an international campaign which is surprising because somehow this concept of, of of drawing that parallel between cooking and dogs somehow is grasped in any language and and everybody immediately goes well yes that gets the message home much better than dogs die in hot cars because everyone just thinks well how hot they, and it, it, it's it's somehow or other it's so well known that sort of expression that people don't question it and don't think about it and don't visualize it but the cooking makes people feel sick so what's and your it, you know what's your angle on that then i mean do you you mentioned about perhaps getting a celebrity chef involved you know because i know it's it sounds really horrible doesn't it but actually that yeah. is the point isn't it so what what yes. are your plans with that what are you aiming for our, our, our dream would be if someone like gordon ramsay was to just just as you know he, he's got dogs and he's got bulldogs as well so they're dogs that would really struggle in a hot car we would just adore him 
to agree to either just lend his name or even better, just actually let us film him saying to camera, you know, it's not just, you know, in other countries where people cook dogs. It's happening here. It's happening here in supermarket car parks up and down the country. And we need we need someone that is unexpected to give that message and someone who maybe I mean great if on his um, F word show he was to actually show what happens in a hot car and show that you could actually cook yeah, a meal that would be excellent that. yeah that really would be so so yeah. important and what a great representation so so people can get involved how what's what's the next step I know you've mentioned a blog how do they reach that and what do they do do they get um, I've seen some stickers I've seen some posters yeah. so what do we do next if we all sort of really want to get this spread out everywhere what what you know where's right. the next place to go okay well the, the easiest way to find it is if you go to dogs today magazine.co.uk which is our sort of or just search dogs today magazine you will find that website on the covering page there are two relevant links one of them says editor's blog if you just click on that takes you through to my blog and whatever's going on in the world the first sentence is if you want to get to don't cook the dog click here and it'll go to the this one blog that we keep updating every day with the latest campaign news but also on the dogs today website there's a click through to don't cook the dog where you can order online stickers posters avatars um blog buttons everything in one place everything is free the only thing we're asking for is postage and packing and if because if you're using online services to take money five pounds is the minimum that it makes any sense because they will take their percentages and it just it just ends up being silly so the minimum quantity on the online is 15 well, up to 15 stickers for, for that postage and package price but if you only want one you just send us a stamped addressed envelope and we'll just send you one out. So, But you can just, on that click-through, you can order up to 500 stickers and I think it's about £20 for 500 stickers. So it is just the cost of us posting them out. And we want as many retailers, as many charities, as many vets as possible to be um, places that hand out these stickers. And we, we're paying for the... We've, we've printed 50,000 stickers already. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we're ready for the next order because the pre-orders on that first 50,000 are so substantial. There's, so, there's some fantastic um, online businesses that have straight away said, we want a 1,000. Mm. We want every order that goes out is going to have these stickers in them. And we want it to be like that every person, like even if, if you, don't, you don't have a dog-related business, but if you know 15 people that have got a car get get them get you know do do the click through on on there and get your you know get 15 stickers go up to your maximum and it's a huge goodwill campaign isn't it i mean it's massively reliant on everyone's goodwill and i think you know the amount of work that you and your team have put in is, is just incredible i think that uh it's not um i mean i'll use the avatar on this blog as well when i publish and i'll put the links on there it's not a horrible sticker i should point out it's quite um it's kind of quite cute, but in a kind of very serious message way. And I think Judith's done a really good job of that because it just yeah, conveys what sweet. you're looking at it thinking, well, that's quite sweet. And then you realise actually the, the reality of the message hits home. And I think that's so important. So, you know, we could all have a sticker. We could pass stickers on. We can support the blog. Um, you know, what else is next oh, and after the, this? And, the, and there's posters as well. that You can click to download an A4 poster that you can print out on your own home computer, mm -hmm. or by your home computers. Or we've also got A3 stickers here that we can send 10 out for, I think we can, we can get 10 into a cardboard tube. So it, it, you, can, you can get 10 for £5 of really big A3 posters that really get the message and we keep getting what we love to see as well is people can email us photos of the posters up um and and we, and who who you get to support it we, we had a load of bikers supporting us the other day it's fantastic what a brilliant you, idea Yay. yeah and, and, and we, we, we will, indeed and we, we will publish these you know a lot of these pictures in the next issue just to show how quickly people were getting out there because also until it's, it's going to be another couple of well, it's about a week until the massive 50,000 load of stickers arrive because we had to go we had to go to China to get that many <laughs> printed nobody could print them that quickly and, and that, in that quantity um, there's been people 
um, printing off the posters and laminating them and sticking enormous car stickers <laughs> in their cars in a, as a temporary measure. And you should think, oh, bless people, that's so lovely that they're, they're, they're so motivated. And other people just printing out loads and loads, probably using huge amounts of ink uh, from their, <laughs> their printers and handing them out in car parks. Um, because What a brilliant idea. Now, that is yeah. a good idea. Yeah. So, I, I think that's the thing. Is It's also... If somebody's got something in their hand like this and they see somebody leaving a dog in a car, they, it's somehow easier to give them a piece of paper and say, you know, a bit like, you know, we do with people who don't clean up after their dogs and we hand them a bag of, uh, you know, poo bag as, mm. as if, oh, you must have obviously forgotten yours. You know, it's that sort of thing that hopefully people will feel a little braver mm. in actually going up to people that may be just about to leave a dog in a car so, so just a, to sort of make it clear. So for a, sort of a quite a cold learning message, you know, that actually this isn't a bunch of do-gooders. This is generally happening every single day in the UK and other countries where it's even on an overcast day, it can get really, really warm. And this is a chance to do something, no matter how little influence you think you might be able to have, you know, you can print something out, you can get something for free. You know, everybody can put do their bit. And I think that's great. So Beverly, thank you so much for coming on the podcast to talk about this. And, no, no, it, um, it's a great pleasure. Yeah, hopefully yeah. you'll keep us updated and people will sign on to the blog. I should also point out that they can follow Dogs Today on Facebook as well, which is certainly how I keep up to date with things. So if you're oh, on Facebook, great. you can look up Dogs Today and um, the blog links are all updated on there as well. Beverly, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very so much. <laughs> Well, thanks to Beverly for taking the time to talk to Karen about this campaign. And again, I'd just like to reiterate, don't leave your dog in a car. If you have any feedback to this week's episode, don't hesitate to get in touch. You can send us an email at podcast at intellidogs.com. And don't forget to visit Karen's website, intellidogs.com, where you'll find great insight into what's going on in the world of dogs and how to improve the life we live with our canine friends. The bandwidth for the Wild Poor Dog podcast this week was sponsored by Dougal's Den. Dougal's Den.co.uk. Amazing finds for the furry kind.